Okay, we're going to draw. Wait, wait. What? It's a Nothing. good deal. We're going to draw a tubular flower. Anybody want to see a tubular flower? A white tubular flower. I'm going to draw it right now. But if you don't come and watch, that's okay because it's video. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is sort of measure it. I don't know if any of this is showing. It doesn't. It's showing. Okay. It's not. It, it needs to be. You're not showing the flower. The one that she's drawing. I don't care. Oh, you're not seeing the one I'm drawing? She no. hasn't started drawing yet. I know, but you're not seeing. Oh, I see. She's yeah, but doing that one. She's not doing this oh, one. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. First, I just oh, want to get you know, the shape of this flower. Can you make it so that this doesn't show? This will not show in the recording. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just getting an idea of the direction, the fact that it's a tubular flower. I'm taller. And it's gonna go get go back into a stem down there. And then right around here there'll be a, I'm gonna be using a series of ellipses. And the bottom ellipse will show where these sepals will come out of. So I'm just getting the direction of everything because the most important thing when you draw a flower is to have everything uh, grow and connect to the right place. And you always start with the center axis, right? Everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. They never forget it. So you have to have that first. I haven't really measured anything yet, but that's the concept. And then what happens in here Believe it or not, what goes down here actually connects up to that. That's the opening, right? And then the petals flop over it. So before you draw something, you want to kind of have an understanding of what the structure does before you draw anything, right? I haven't measured anything yet. I'm just sort of mapping it to give you an idea of what and then these petals flop over, I'll get that after, but that's the idea. And already you can see, right? It feels like, you know, this shape, this form. It's this tubular shaped, and it has an opening, and then the petals, so everything fits in the right places. So that's what I do first. Then, because it's, I've got an, uh, this round shape for this flower, more or less a round tubular flower, but, it's, it's going back in space, so it's gonna be foreshortened, okay? So to get that right, I always measure my foreshortening. So it's about an inch and a quarter that way by about almost two inches the other way. And that's how it becomes an ellipse instead of a circle. So it's about two inches that way, and I said the other way about an inch and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So let me make that way a little bigger. I'm going to do it more like around, and this is just a guide. I'm going to erase all of this now. So it's just to sort of get, get myself positioned. Then I have to figure out where in this direction does the opening come in on that flower, right? So it's, it's about close to this edge because it's foreshortened. So it's about like something like that. And then I make sure that it appears as if the bottom part of this flower, and then I measure that too, because that's foreshortened. So that's gonna only come to, it's gonna taper quickly, because it's foreshortened, meaning there's the space is diminishing because of the feeling of three dimensions, right? And so it gets narrower because it has to fit inside that sepal cup. So I'm so now you see how I drew lightly, and now I still can go back and perfect my drawing. And it's got a right around here, and erase as I needed to redraw it. But I did that concept drawing, which you could do on the side too. You don't necessarily have to do it right where you're drawing but I do, because I draw very lightly. Now I'm going to measure that bottom ellipse created by the sepals, because they, they fit into a circle, or in foreshortened, they're an ellipse, right? Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that ellipse is gonna be down here, and this is how you fit, everything fits on, 
on your stem, on your branch, on your flower. So it all fits together. Then I draw the center. I'm always, I'm into these center axes all the time. What are the center axes? Just the center of, in this case, each of these sepals, which look a bit like petals. And I do that center axis again so everything fits and fits on the form. Okay, you see how that, and there's one in the back that's hidden back there. So then I can even draw further on that and get how that flower disappears. And then it, that's about it. And if I want, I check my measurement again. Because even though I measure, I often measure wrong. wrong. So that's pretty close. Let me do the whole thing again. <coughs> that's pretty good. Okay, so I've gotten that far. Take a deep breath. <laughs> then the next is we're going to draw like I said these petals and it's so much fun to do this because each one of those petals and you can prove it to yourself by taking a flower and kind of looking at it opening it pulling it apart I recommend you do all of that Wendy can you do this right here so they're being focused sure yeah. you know you want to look at your flower see how the petals so it's a tube shaped flower a lot of tropical flowers do this are tubular shaped, um, maybe they're bat pollinated, they get very sweet smelling usually. And then the petals separate at the top and create the, the flower petal-like surf, you see that? But they all go right back into that tube. But they're not separate like a tumor. No, this is a tubular, right, this flower is connected, right, different than a tulip. And so you just have to smell it if you haven't taken it, smell it. Keep it there. Okay, so, but you just want to know that each one of these, so now back to that idea of the center axis of each of these petals. So I just get the direction that they come and separate out of that tube shape. All right, and there's five of them. Good idea to count them because sometimes you tend to, um, you know, add additional petals because you just start doing them and you forget. Okay, then I'm going to do the width of the petal too and get try to get that right. And when you have your center axis, it's easy to um, draw on either side of it to get your dimension. And you just take whatever you know needed measurements you need. But that petal is going to come in and then go disappear down inside that deep, deep, tube okay and then the next one and then the other thing about these petals is they overlap each other right so you're going to want to be able to pay attention to which one is on top and which one is underneath and so i'm just it's a very light drawing to start no detail no hard outlining edges just trying to get things in the right direction and in the right place and the right size. Okay, so all, and I race as I go so that ellipse I used is gonna be go goodbye. It doesn't, I don't need it anymore, but it was served its purpose. Okay, and this petal comes in like so, and then erase more. So you can see what we're left with. It's going to be a white flower, so I'm going to have to erase a lot because it's going to be light and things will show. So this petal up here, that guy, he starts out and then he flips over, right? And we always want to show that. It's so cool, but how do you do it? How do you draw it? So you, if you start that at your center axis and then it flips back up, then you can sort of put the the petal as it wraps around. Draw that and see I'm drawing so lightly because I'm going to continue to erase till I get it right. I don't have to get it right the first time but so it sort of flips over. Okay so that one flips over, this guy flips over, there's a little flip on that petal because my sadly it's like noon in the tropics, everything's wilting. That's what happens, you gotta be quick. 
Okay, but there, I got that whole flower. And that kind of looks like, you feel that flower, right? Mm -hmm. You feel that flower? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. So once I have that, I'm coming in here, I'm gonna get my little finer eraser. I'm gonna go in and erase a little more, just so we can see what we got. But what I like about this flower I'm excited about is I got a lot of overlaps. I love overlaps. Because especially on a white flower, I mean, what do you got to work with? Not much. So overlaps are great because that's where you can put that bit of contrast. Now, see, I'm just erasing away so we can see what we're left with. And then we can make more adjustments if we need to. But had I not put all those structural lines to start, it would have been very hard to draw that flower, but so much easier this way. You see that flower starting to emerge, right? Mm -hmm. So we just clean up a little bit down here. It's much easier to draw a flower this way, giving it a structure to put everything on than to try to draw each petal exactly as they are and get the angle that they come out of the center and all of that. That's hard to do, but you know, you can sort of do a combination too. Okay. So now I've got that erased, okay. So now I'm gonna start, since this is a white flower, um, I, I like to either use this earth green or this gray or even, I really like on a delicate flower like this to use a very thin to start. Because then it's paler and I don't get too dark too soon, okay? And I see like a little bit of a yellowy green in the center there. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pulling out my colors and getting ready. I see a, you know, a little yellow. <laughs> Right, so I got all those, and then I am going to need a very occasionally a really dark accent, but that'll be a little later on. Okay, so I got to start those. I'm still going to need though. I've got a black, very thin too, because I could maybe use that in. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, here. There we go. Okay. And a bit of dark sepia, believe it or not. But just a touch. Okay, so I've got my colors figured out. And now I'm gonna move those away. I just wanted you to see that. And let's start with the gray, very thin to start. Anybody have well, let's just put in a little greenish yellow down there. Because inside kind of the center hole of this flower is a very important part. It's exciting, right? Everything that's mysterious down in there and it needs, it's, we're all, you know, it's a good part to draw. So I'm just gonna throw a little color there because it's really the only place I have color. And then I'm gonna start to shade first inside that a little bit. Actually, so in this case, I've got my left coming, my light is coming from the upper right. This is what left-handed people should use, which I never use, but I did set it up that way pretty exactly, so I'm gonna just do it for a change. Let's see if I can work with upper lighting from the right. Let's see what happens, okay, so. The first thing I shade for though, I don't really care yet about the light. I care about the overlaps. And also I have to do a, a lot of redrawing now because I just did an approximate drawing and I want to refine it. So I always uh, keep my magnifier handy because petal edges are so delicate and graceful and often not smooth. You know, they wiggle. They, they, Crinkle. They do all kinds of things, and rather than make them smooth, I'd rather show that. Okay, and they're really thin. Petal edges are so thin, right? They're like, how how do you make them so that they don't look like they're made out of um, stone or plastic? So you have to be very careful. So 
so I'm erasing a bit so we can see I'm going to draw this one petal and also I'm going to focus on how it overlaps okay so there are two areas where this petal overlaps see and I'm redrawing that one petal here to make sure it goes underneath I can use each petal as a guide to where everything fits okay and just because I drew it one way at the very beginning that doesn't mean I leave it that way ever that's just a guide to get me started okay I do my real drawing when I start to go in there and refine and add some toning okay so uh, just so you met I, I just want to let you know that so now I'm paying a bit more attention to the shape of this petal the way it crinkles and ruffles a little I don't like the way I don't want to make it too square petals usually round a bit if it looks a little square I'm going to just erase it and, re and redraw it it's not hard to redraw it's not even a redraw it's part of the refining process of drawing it's never too late to make a change if you need to okay so something like that for this petal and it's underneath that petal therefore right away I'm going to tone underneath now this is a white flower so you would think there'd be no tones at all it's just white but to create it you could see a lot of shadowing and but so that I want to keep the flower overall looking white I will have a lot of tone I will have a full range of tones from light to dark however Uh, there'll be much less ratio in terms of the amount of the dark tones and the mid tones and much more of the light tones. Okay, so you see how I've by toning a bit underneath, I'm putting that petal on top of that. Also, this petal is slightly concave. So I want to show that a little bit. So I've added a little more tone. I mean, you probably can't see much of anything yet because it's so pale, right? But I'm gonna add a tiny bit of crinkle there. And so I tone underneath it to push the crinkled overlap on top. It's not really, once you get the idea, you see what I did? Okay, so now on this petal, and then that petal is gonna be on top. Okay, so now I gotta redraw this petal a bit. It's funny how something changed just it's recently. Wilting it's it's wilting. Boring. Something just How are you changed. Watching? So yeah, because we have the light on it especially, I don't like to leave hot light. I'm just gonna draw it the way it was here. I hope I did it correctly. But so okay, I see what I can do here. Actually I can bring this edge of the petal underneath a bit more over here and then I have to redraw this So that this gives me an opportunity to do this overlap. This is really the fun part, is doing this overlap, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, there's a little shading here, because that petal's on top. And then I get a lot of opportunity to shade a bit underneath here. But it's still very subtle and light, but you see the idea of that? to start to give that feeling of the, the overlaps. Okay, I gotta work quick now because as we know, so one idea is you really, you go around and you refine your drawing pretty right away so that if the flower starts to change on you, you don't keep changing your drawing.
but I was hoping I had enough time to just do this, but now I'm just going to quickly do some of these overlaps to get the front. And then this one is in front, and that's underneath it. Therefore, the one underneath gets the tone a little bit, right? See that? And the mm -hmm. tone starts, yep. and then it feathers away. It's not an abrupt amount of tone. It's not a halo. It's a, and what you'll see, we're going to add a lot more. But you see that? Okay, let's go quickly now. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Underneath here. Now it's fun. Now we switch to the, the tube part of the flower, which is the cylinder. All right? And we just have to think of our cylinders. And it's underneath, so of course it's not going to be. It's got to have some shading. You see that? How all of a sudden it's coming alive? And so... Tubular flowers are so much fun for this reason because they give you that opportunity to have the underneath part and the up top part. Okay. And then later on we'll work on these overlaps and, and, and make them roll a little bit. You all know what I mean by rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't that something you all want to do? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Right? Who doesn't want to make rolling petals? Okay. Okay. So now let's just get the rest of that in. Oh my God, I need a break. Okay. Yellow, let's do a little color and then we'll tone it. But let's just get some of that color in there. And I'm gonna move into this green. Here again, I'm still thinking, I'm not thinking of color. Um, what am I thinking of, anybody? The form. Overlap. Overlap. The form, all of those, but mainly at this point, it's always first the overlap. And you switch from the berry fan to the other green. Yeah, because I don't have, yeah. I, I only use the very thin at that point because um, you know, it's very fine texture and that's such a delicate white petal. And that's why I started with that, but, okay. Down here, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm rolling right into dark sepia for just a touch. Look, not a lot, but enough. And not an outline. But you see just that little bit what happens. Mm -hmm. Once you start to do that, then you know wherever else you're going to need to do that. And okay, so I'm underneath here. And I'll deal with the rest of that later. I just want to get one, show you how one flower and a white flower, how you, and a tubular flower. So I just want to get enough of this so that the flower is sitting inside this sepal cup. So that really feels like it's going down. And once I've done that little bit of dark there, can you tell that I'm like, oh, I got to do, I, there needs to be some dark in some other places too, right? So now, just because I'm really going quick, I'm going, where else will I need some bits of dark? And even though it's a white flower, I'm going to need a little bit. You see that? Certainly, I'm going to need a little bit in here, just to show where it's darkest and, the, and it's in shadow the most. I can layer a little. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, once you start one place, it, like, it tells you where to go next almost tells you where next, just a touch, not a lot, but a little bit, and it feathers away. You see that? Right? Mm -hmm. Whoa, once you did that, you're like, over here, over here now. Just a bit, feather it away, it's not a solid outline. I'm just repeating everything you say to yourself as you do this. And then here, just a touch, right there, a little dip in the shadow, 
Then it fades away just to give it that accent where it needs it. Kind of like, you see how then it, be, it starts to put your flower in focus a bit. And now I'm going to do this one. Just a bit of dark. And feather it away. I can always go back and add more. I don't want to add too much. On the other hand, I don't want to not add it, right? I don't want to be afraid to do this. Okay, so there, little bits there. I'm gonna need some, what's going on here? I don't know, I gotta make sense out of this. This here. This is going to be the edge of that petal. And there'll be a little tone underneath it. Now, see, does anybody see have outlines anywhere? No. Okay, no outlines. So I start to go around, and, and so look, I didn't do any here. I didn't do any there, right? And it's like, you got to do it. But first, I have to sharpen my pencil, because this kind of work is always with a really sharp one. Okay, nice sharp point, and I cannot press hard because it's so sharp, which is great, because that means I have to be so delicate. I can just put down a tiny bit, but it's important, the tiny bit. You know, and if I go too far, I can take it away a little, but I'm kind of trying to go fast here to get it done. Okay, so now if I get some color down there, it'll really make that flower look light, look white, right? So here we'll take this green, because it is green, but it's a pale green. I'll just put a little down. And then look how it makes the flower look so white. Mm -hmm. And then I see there's this other cool the sepal after the pet, the flower falls off on this plant and then the sepal cup remains and that's where the pistil still is in the ovary and it's going to start growing a really the coolest seed pod you ever want to see somebody want to show one of those seed where's those seed pods you could show you one is that these? no it's a green like is little the, ones yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh i know what they look like oh yes yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah, and mm. so eventually they're going to grow like that. Look at wow. that. Mm. You need to bring and, it further then, up. and then there? No, right here. Yep. Okay, and then what happens is they turn orange and they split open, and inside they have these seeds that are orange and black. Really spectacular. So now I'm erasing because I had, I didn't really like the way I did these sepal edges. I made them a little too pointy, regular. I didn't pay attention to their edges. <laughs> okay, so I'm just erasing because I'm going to redraw those. But before I redraw them, I'm going to study them with my magnifier. And I'll go, oh, they're not really pointed edges. They're a little rounded at the tips. And then I gotta sharpen my pencil. You know, so just because the first time around you, you kind of approximated the shape and you do what you always did, which is we all have the way we always drew a certain kind of point on our leaves or our petals. We just do it that way, whatever it is we do. But then you go back in and you, you don't. You go back in and you make it like the flower is. So these are less pointed. They're a little more rounded at the top. It does not look better? I think it looks so much better. If 
like that, and then um, dark green. Then I can fill in the rest of this if I want to, but that's the idea. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm.